It's after one o'clock. You're late. So dock me. You do this for free. Then be grateful. Well, Dorothy, I'm ready to go to work. How do I look? Oh, um, uh, Ma, you look adorable. Adorable? I want to look aggressive, powerful, like a corporate killer. <laughs> Lose the hat. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Now you look like the activities director at a retirement home. <laughs> oh, Ma. Ma, your first day. You must be really excited. You bet I'm excited. This was a great idea of yours. It's given me a whole new lease on life. I need a raise. <laughs> Ma, you haven't even started yet. I meant help me up. These new underalls are choking my pancreas. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ma, I think this will be good for you. Mr. Porter seems like a nice man. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun there. And don't forget the money. I haven't had a paycheck since 1942, and then I blew it all on war bonds. Well, at least you got it back. No, Italian war bonds. <laughs> I fell for their slick advertising campaign. Buy Italian war bonds, the quickest, surest, fascist way to double your money. <laughs> well, let's go. Ma, uh, you want to make a good impression? Matching shoes. They should match my purse? No, they should match each other. <laughs> Ma, look at this place. It's lovely. Don't get any ideas, pussycat. I'm not getting any ideas, Ma. You're scheming. Remember Shady Pines, Dorothy? Honest Ma, this is the way to the new Dairy Queen. <laughs> Miss Barnack, right on time. Ah, Mr. Porter, I'd like you to meet your new activities director, my mother, Sophia Petrillo. Activities director? Oh, uh, surely you remember the conversation we had last do this for me, you promised. <laughs> activities director? Oh, of course I remember. Nice meeting you. I'm sure you'll get along well with our, uh, our little gang. Hi, everybody. I'm your new activities director. What's your name, honey? Sophia. Sophia, move it. You're blocking the TV. <laughs> Room, but don't worry, I'm highly qualified. By the way, what actually does an activities director do? Well, basically, you'll pop in the video rental, uh, be a fourth for bridge, a buddy. If you do well, we'll have trouble telling you from the other residents. I could do that. Good. Well, if you need me, I'll be in my office. Oh, uh, by the way, a couple things you should know. Uh, this is Mr. Lewis. He won't be any trouble. He's just sort of uh, quiet. And uh, that's Smokey. He fancies himself a ladies' man. Sort of the, uh, the rooster of our little hen house. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't dance with him. He'll put the moves on anybody. Uh, Smokey, I want you to meet my daughter. Ma! <laughs> now, I have to go to work, and I don't want you to worry about me, so I'm going to say to you what you said to me the very first day you dropped me off at school. See if you can find someone who looks clean to drive you home. <laughs> Oh, Ma, I'm glad you're here. I got a call from Mr. Porter. He thinks you're pushing the folks at Cypress Grove too hard. Big deal. One little dance till you drop marathon. It only took 10 minutes. <laughs> and what's this about their staying into the night doing homework? A lot of them sit around waiting for their kids to write. So I said, why don't you write to our lonely servicemen instead? I mean, we older folks have to exercise our minds too. And don't you forget it, Gloria. <laughs> Ma, Gloria is your daughter in California. Uh, I, I knew that. A mere dramatization to make my point, uh, pal. <laughs> Look, Ma, I know that you're excited about this job, It's but... more than a job, Dorothy. That's it, Dorothy. <laughs> when I see them, I see me. Don't you understand? Have you ever seen what happens to a person when their brain is allowed to disintegrate and their minds turn completely to mush? <laughs> hey, my middle finger's the longest. <laughs> Mr. Porter, I came as soon as I could. Miss Bornack, I'm glad you're here. We've got a problem. It's your mother. What about her? I don't know where she is. I don't know where any of them are. She took some of our guests out for a walk that was six hours ago. <laughs> Have you called the police? Oh, sure. I'll tell them to be on the lookout for a bunch of old people in Miami. There's a lead. I 
pussycat. What are you doing here? Ma, where were you? You said you were just taking them out for a walk. I know, but we got halfway down the block and Lucille said, I want a cappuccino. Well, the only place I know to get a really good cappuccino is Hialeah. Sophia, this is the final warning. I don't want anything like this happening again. Mr. Porter, you hired me to do a job and I'm gonna do it my way. Okay, that's it. Charade's over. What's he talking about? Sophia, you're not the activities director. You're here because your daughter wanted us to keep an eye on you, and I'm afraid we cannot do that anymore. Miss Bornack, please don't bring her back. Keep an eye on me? Is that true? Look, Ma, I'm not going to lie to you. This man is a patient here. <laughs> he could be dangerous. Let's get out of here before he starts causing trouble. Dorothy. OK, OK. I thought you needed looking after during the day when I wasn't around, and I knew you wouldn't agree to come here as a guest. So you're saying that this whole activities director thing was a put-up job? Mostly his idea. <laughs> oh, Ma, I did it for your own good. Nobody bothered to consult me about what was for my own good. So goodbye, Mr. Porter. Goodbye, Dorothy. <sighs> Thank you both for making me look like an old fool. <laughs> oh, great, great party, Sophia. But where's the junk food? I've got a great idea for free pizza. Let's call up that 30-minute pizza place. Tell them we're a bunch of college kids. And when the guy gets here, one of us grandmothers will open the door and say, what took you so long? <laughs> oh, it's great to have you back, Sophia. It's good to be back. I was getting tired of sitting home and feeling sorry for myself. They may not have wanted an activities director here, but they got one. So what do you say? Let's get active. Hey, Mr. Lewis, would you like to dance? Oh, I can see you've had lessons. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's 10 o'clock. Do you care where your children are? No! <laughs> you put your right foot in. Come on, get him in, get him in. You take your right foot out. Let's go, let's go. You put your right foot in and hurry up or we'll never get to the park where you shake it all about on purpose. <laughs> oh, God, they got into the medication. <laughs> Ma, what do you think you're doing? Oh, look who's here. Everybody remembers my daughter, Dorothy. Or maybe you know her by her Indian name. Dances with nobody. <laughs> Ma, come home. I'll come home when I'm good and ready. Look, Ma, you have been sick, and I know what's best for you. Now I'm taking you home, and nothing is going to stop me. Damn it. Should have known it was you. Please, Mr. Porter, I can handle her. You haven't been able to handle her so far. Maybe I can handle her. Who are you having a problem with? You. Oh, perfect. I know my every move. <laughs> Look, these people are up way too late. This party's over. Everybody back to bed. Let's go. I danced tonight. First time in 25 years. Mr. Lewis, you can speak. How come you haven't spoken before? No one was listening. Not until you got here. I've been here. Could have spoken to me. Well, I don't like you. <laughs> don't you see, Mr. Porter, you're not listening to these people. I mean, you're only as old as you feel, and you're making them feel old. And, Pussycat, you make me feel old, too. You make me feel like I can't make my own choices. Ma, I worry about you. And everything I did here, well... Ma, it's because... I'm afraid of losing you. I understand that, but Pussycat, give me air. I know you love me, but maybe we can make decisions about me together. Yes, Ma, we will. <laughs> After one o'clock. You're late. So dock me. You do this for free. Then be grateful. Anything happening? Yeah, we got three in surgery, two in x-ray, and you have to deliver these on your break. In your dreams. I'm a sunshine lady, not a teamster. Now get the hell out of here and let me do my work. Oh, uh, one more thing. Your boyfriend was looking for you. Sam? He wheeled himself out here just to see me? Yeah. I don't get it. He must see a side of you that's hidden from the rest of the world. <laughs> like the dark side of the moon. You're just jealous because you know you can never have me. <laughs> What's the matter? You don't watch General Hospital? <laughs> this place is a passion pit. <laughs> Any flowers for me today? No. Are you sure? 
The name's Leonard. I know your name. You ask me every day if I have flowers for you, and the answer is always no. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I made a mistake. There are flowers for you today. Really? Which one? All of them. And the balloons, too. <laughs> There's no one here to deliver them right now, so you leave your walker here and just wheel these to your room. Oh, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> Sam, how are you doing? I'm feeling real good today. I know, your strength's coming back. You wheeled yourself all the way down the hall. Excuse me, I'd like to check on my husband, Mr. Carp. Prostate surgery? Nothing yet, but he'll be fine. I went through it myself 20 years ago. <laughs> you had prostate surgery? What, do I look like a cross-dresser? <laughs> My husband had the surgery. I was the one who went through it. Oh, boy, what a day. What happened, Ma? Butch and Sundown steal your seat on the bus? I had a miserable day at work. That stupid manager docked me a half a day's pay because I said hello to the customers. You're not allowed to say hello to the customers? Not at Pecos Pete's Chow Wagon. You have to say howdy. As a matter of fact, you have to say howdy, partner. How about a saddlebag of fries with that ranch house burger? I don't know why. It doesn't trip naturally off my tongue. <laughs> Sophia, they took half your day's pages for that? This manager is a shock. He's bucking for supervisor. He told Mildred and Edna they could only take 10-minute bathroom breaks. Hey, Ma, that's not unreasonable. Please, they're 85 years old. It takes Mildred 10 minutes to roll down her stockings. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. How was your meeting? Terrible. That weasel of a manager wouldn't budge an inch. He pushed us to the wall. Now it's all out war. What do you mean, Ma? Tomorrow morning, all chow wagon employees over the age of 70 are officially out on strike. You're gonna pick at the restaurant? No, Rose. We're gonna put on war paint and shoot flaming arrows at the covered wagon out front. <laughs> Gee, that might even get you on the 6 o'clock news. <laughs> Okay, clear out. We need the kitchen. What's going on? A showdown with McCracken. Your boss is coming here? Yeah, a week on strike has had its effect on business. He wants to negotiate. I insisted we do it on our turf. <laughs> That's him. Let him in. I gotta prepare the table. Why are you doing that, Sophia? It's a power move. The three of us against one of him, and I get to look down on him. <laughs> Ma, Mr. McCracken's here. Well, ladies, let's get down to business. I've got to get back to the chow wagon for the lunch rush. Yeah, we'll just leave you to your negotiations. Before we go, can we get you some milk or some double stuffed Oreos? No, thank you, ma'am. Boy, he's tough. Have a seat, boys. Look, I've read and reread your list of demands. Quick, McCracken. Before you begin, I want to tell you something. I'm no novice when it comes to major negotiations. Oh, really? Let me tell you a story. Picture it. Sicily, 1922. <laughs> An attractive peasant girl who has saved her lira embarks on a glorious vacation to a Crimean resort on the Black Sea. For weeks, she frolics at this seaside resort and enjoys the company of many young men, all of whom adore her. All of them? <laughs> Shut up and I work alone. <laughs> All of them. When it's time to return to Sicily, three different suitors beg her to stay. But she can't decide who to choose, so she chooses none of them. But she agrees to meet with them at the same resort many years later. To her trio of suitors, that eventful gathering was referred to as rendezvous with Sophia. But to the rest of the world, it was better known as the Yalta Conference. <laughs> you expect me to buy that? Look, the only reason I came over here was so you wouldn't cause a scene at the chow wagon when I fired you. Fired us? You heard me. And no story you could tell is gonna change my mind. Not even the one we could tell your father about how his car got dented while you were doing wheelies and not while it was sitting in the parking lot? You wouldn't do that, would you? Hey. She's your grandmother. Has she ever lied to you? Hey, everybody. We've got some great news. 
We found a place. It's absolutely perfect. It's near the beach, it's reasonably priced, and it's just the right size. Oh, Ma, that's great. We're so excited, we can't wait to show it to oh. you. Well, what do you think? <laughs> Ma, this is a, a rundown old concession stand. You can't live here. We're not living here, we leased it. It took every dime we had, but it's a dream come true. I don't understand. You should have that printed on a T-shirt. <laughs> We're opening the old business again. A million-dollar idea deserves a second chance. Ma, come on. You're both over 80. Starting a business is hard work. Yeah, for amateurs, but we've already done this before. By the way, we'll be staying with you until the business gets off the ground. <laughs> Well, what happens if the business fails? We'll have to talk about a nightlight for the bathroom. <laughs> Max, put the paintbrush down a minute. Taste this pizza. I want an absolutely honest opinion. I'm dying. Yeah? It's gorgeous. Yeah? Perfection, like velvet in my mouth. A masterpiece, a Picasso with mozzarella, a Rembrandt with tomato sauce. I thought it needed more salt. And garlic, it's a little flat. <laughs> oh, wow, look at this. Boy, the place is really coming along. Oh, boy, I'll say it is. I have to give you two credit. It looks like it's really gonna happen. Why shouldn't it happen? I know the pizza business like the back of my hand. Uh I never noticed that before. What do you think it would cost to remove something like that? <laughs> Let's talk about it at home. Come on, it's getting late. Let's get going. We have a few more hours of work here. Oh, Ma, you're overdoing it. We're fine. Besides, we want our grand opening in time for the big beach festival this weekend. Sophia, it's getting damp and chilly out here. You're gonna catch yourself a cold. Please, I haven't had a cold in 40 years. This is the worst cold I've had in 40 years. <laughs> My back is killing me. I feel dizzy and nauseous. Every joint in my body feels like it's on fire. Boy, you really caught a nasty bug. Please, I'm 84 years old. I feel like this every day. <laughs> Never fear, Dr. Rose is here. I made you both an old-fashioned St. Olaf tonic, guaranteed to get you back on your feet and put hair on your chest. <laughs> That's the one nasty side effect they could never figure out. <laughs> I'm feeling better. I think I'll go check the stand. The big beach festival is this weekend. We have to be open for that. If we don't make some money, we'll lose our lease. Max, it is out of the question. She's right. We're too sick. The dream is ended. It's over. It's a dirty, rotten shame we couldn't find somebody who could find it in their heart to help this absolutely adorable old couple <laughs> fulfill their dream of a lifetime. <laughs> Oh, all right, all right, we will. You? Do you have any experience? No. no. You're hired. <laughs> How's it going? Ma, what are you doing here? I was feeling a little better and I wanted to get some fresh air. How's business? We've only had two customers all day. I think it's because it's such a nice hot day they're all in the water. That's your problem? You can't get the people out of the water? Amateurs. Let me show you how you run a pizza knish stand at the beach. Shark! 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 Now they're out of the water, start selling! And after Ma got everybody out of the water, people started trying our food. And before we knew it, there wasn't a pizza or a caniche left on the shelf. The place is a hit. Yep. Sophia, I am very proud of you. Not only did you save the business, but you saved all those people from the shark. <laughs> Don't look so worried. I handle the books. 